evening, Dad. Oh, evening. Wind blew sand in my eyes. I, I'm just resting them for a spell. Everything going all right? Uh, stock is finally gentled down for the night. Listen, why don't you uh, why don't you go get a cup of coffee? I'll take your watch for a while. It's my time to stand watch. I'll get the job done. Sure enough. See you back in camp. The wind could fire the brush and stampede the whole herd. It'd take us a week to round them up. Uh, we were careful to see it didn't happen. You were careful. You're supposed to be riding watch. Not sitting around guzzling this stuff. Well, a fellow's got to have some take the chill off his bones. The orders were no drinking on this drive. You knew that. It's not the first time you've broken the rules, but it's going to be the last. All right, we owe you two weeks' pay. There it is. Be off this ranch in an hour. Just like that, huh? Pack up and get out. That's right, just like that. You hear the man, Temple? I heard him. Don't like it. No man fires me and then tells me what to do. What do you reckon we ought to do about him, Sand? Teach him some better manners. That's the bottle talking. It's not making much sense. Not this time. This is my idea. Ten seconds are right out. You don't? In eleven seconds, you'll be dead. Thanks, Dan. That's what I owe you. You don't owe me anything, boy. You'd have done the same thing for me. Joe, can't you get him turned around? You told him enough times, you think he'd do it by himself now. Would you try sweet-talking him, little brother, like you do them gals on Saturday night? Why don't you sweet-talk him? They look a lot more like the gals you dance with on Saturday night. <laughs> uh, Dan, you want me to take him? You put the iron on him? After 50 years, Hoss, I think I can handle it. It's the last of the strays. You're doing a real good job, son. Oh, that's not finished yet. Well, I'm proud of the way you're handling things. We did. Well, thank you. I don't want to mess up my first chance of being trail boys. <laughs> hey, there, there were a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah, I'm sure one of you said. Watch that. Look at the way he turns them over, huh? You know, he taught me to do that when I wasn't much older than you. He's been at it a long time. I'll get him for you, Dan. I don't need your help. Get away! That's all. Did you get your band? No, I just uh, edged the iron cuff you a bit. Sparks a bit. You fool. Look what you've done. Right, John. Well, you listen to me, old man. Yeah, this is going to help anything. Look at next work. Huh? Sorry, boy. 
Never would have happened if that young buck hadn't jumped in. That's all right, Dan. I should have got out of the way. Come on, let's get to the house. Have a look at it. Yeah. All right, that's all for now. We'll pick it up after lunch. He can't do the job anymore. Look, there's more to it than that, and you know it. You saw the way he acted out there. Well, Dan Tolliver used to be the best like wrangler on this ranch. He just doesn't get along with the men anymore. I've been watching him the last few weeks, Pa. He, he's tired. He, he's slow to react to trouble. The other day, the herd turned into him, and his horse almost went out from under him before he could get clear. He did pretty good when those two had you on the hook. He saved me from a bad beating, Pa, and I'm grateful. Look, I'm, I'm not saying fire him, kick him off the ranch. I, I'm just saying find him a job he can handle. There's lots of things he can do around here. Dan Tolliver isn't a ranch hand. He's a wrangler. Always has been. One of the best. Look, Pa, I gotta, I gotta get this drive through. I have to get it through safe and in prime condition. Now, the only way I'm gonna do that is by getting the best out of everything. I know that. All right, today, Dan got a man hurt because he would not admit that he needed help. Now, tomorrow he may get himself killed or somebody else. I, I just don't want that to happen, not on one of our drives. Dan and I go back a whole lot of years together. Long before you were born. I can tell you, I always rode a whole lot easier knowing he was at my side. Doesn't there come a time when a man has to step down? For his own good, Pa. Sure got this buggy looking slick, horse. Wouldn't be to take Sarah Johnson riding, would it? Well, I uh, just could be, Dan. Just could be. Luke had no call to do what he done. I would have got that steer down easy. Yeah, uh, I know that. Well, you take good care of that arm now, so as it don't infect. Oh, will do. Will do that one. Get him. Saturday night, did I? Well, uh, I'm fixing to go into town. Oh, well, uh, just can wait. Why, it'll still be there an hour from now. Yeah, sure, come on. Uh, howdy, Joe. How you doing, that? The usual? But, uh, not to the brim. I do, it bites back at me in the morning. <laughs> I know the feeling very well. <laughs> Here's to absent friends and good memories. What is it you want to talk to me about, Ben? Yeah, we've been friends for a good many years, haven't we, Dan? More years than we care to count, I guess. Yeah, we... We go back a long ways together, Ben. That's for sure. Yeah, the years 
creep up on you. Man begins to feel the difference in his bones. There's nothing wrong, is there, Ben? Your health, uh, I mean? Oh, no, 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 Dan. Uh, fine. Uh, but I was just thinking the other day, with all the men going out in the drive, there's so many things that have to be done around here, and I don't know if I can handle them all. I was just wondering if you... Well, if I couldn't talk into staying here with me and giving me a hand with them. You mean you want me to be a ranch hand? Well, yes, you know, you know, there's so many things that have to be done. That barn needs patching up real bad. And after that? Well, uh, well you know how many things have to be done around a place like this. I get it. After the barn, mend the fence, clean the stables. I'm a wrangler, Ben. I work stock. I always have. Now, what are you trying to say? Come out and say it straight, Ben, the way we always talk. Sit down, Dan. I'm all right where Sit I am. Down. I'm all right here. Well, Dan, you've been working trail on the Ponderosa for the last 15 years. I sure wish you could go on working it. But you can't. I'm too old. Is that what you're saying to me? Oh, what I'm trying to say is that you, you got to stop driving yourself in the line of work that's for young fellas. I'm trying to get you to ease off. It's the only street I know. And I got no intention of changing now. I'll get my gear together and be gone in the morning. You're the dead, burnest, stubbornest man I know. I don't know how many times it's gotten you into trouble. And what for? For me, it's a line I've laid out for myself. And that's the way I got to travel. Well, lay yourself on another line. I don't want you to go. I want you to stay here. Let me change your mind. Can I get you to change yours? Now, don't run off like this. There's no need for that. Help me find the words to make you stay. I got 28 days pay coming to me. Nothing else. Dan? I just want you to know that it was my decision to keep you off the trail. Your decision? Yeah, that's right. You got no right to judge me, boy. None whatsoever. And you're wrong about me. I can still work you young bucks into the ground any time I'm a mind to. Look, Dan, I only... Just have my wages drawn up in the morning. Just have them drawn up. Oliver, you enjoying yourself? You know, you made me look a little foolish out there that night, throwing me in the dirt the way that you did. He snuck up behind us, and he had a rifle then, which he ain't got now. You want a piece of me, come ahead. But you better keep me down for good. You don't, I'll kill both of you. <laughs> Hold on, Dan, there's no need to get all riled up. I suppose you and Joe Cartwright are real tight buddies now, huh? You suppose wrong. I ain't got any more use for Joe Cartwright than you have. Why don't we all sit down, huh? Me and Temple here will uh, share the cost of that bottle with you. I drink only with my friends. I don't see any here tonight. How come you let an old coot like that badmouth you that way? That he'd like you, Sand. That old coot. Got a big anger inside him. And I think it's against the Cartwrights. Yeah, so what if it is? I don't know. Yet. Flint? 
Jim Flint? Hello, Dan. Been a heap of years since our trails crossed. Over 16 of them. Uh -huh. Sit down and have a drink with me. Ah, last time we was together, we worked trail herd on the Big Red. With the Morgan outfit. Remember the night a rattler crawled into your bedroll? Tell me about it. <laughs> First time I ever saw a bedroll climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> And the time that Apache raiding party jumped us, you took an arrow, as I recollect. You recollect? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right after was the first time I ever saw a Wrangler ride side saddle. <laughs> Still troubles me some. What are you doing in Virginia City? Ah, just drifting through. You signed on with any of the trail herds yet? No, I give that up some time ago. Why? You was a good Wrangler. Good as any man I knew. Now... What would make you take a job like this? I gotta eat when I'm hungry. It's as easy as that. <laughs> Swamper, I pay you to clean up this place, not to sit and bother the customers. Thanks for the drink, Dan. Maybe one day we'll get together, kick around old times. Sure, one day, Jim. Thanks, Dan. I didn't mean to bother you. I'd have been bothered if you hadn't stopped by. Come in and sit down, Dan. You're certain I won't be putting you out any. Oh, no, I was just finishing up. Kind of late to be making pies, ain't it? Well, it's a rush order for Mrs. Grant's social tomorrow. I have to take my work however I can find it, no matter what the hour. Things bad for you, Beth? Well, sometimes they get a little rough, but never mind that. You sit down at the table and I'll warm the coffee. You need money, Beth? No. No, I'll manage. Apple pie still your favorite? What? Oh, yeah. Remember other Saturday nights, Dan? The socials. Do you recall? We used to have some high old times at those dances, didn't we? Yes, we did. And as I recall, you were seldom around to see them end. Of course I was. No, you weren't. You used to come in all spruced up, acting the proper gentleman. Then after a few trips around the back with the boys, you'd come in and dance with all the pretty girls. You was one of them pretty girls, if I recollect. The fact that I was with another fellow never seemed to trouble you any. Sure did trouble that other fellow, though, didn't it? Yes, and you'd both go back and settle it. I never saw such a patched-up suit as the one you used to wear. A suit wasn't made to roll on the ground in. We girls used to get so mad at you. Why? I thought you liked to dance with me. We did. You were the best dancer there. But the worst fighter it was always the other fellow that returned to the dance. I never seemed to learn, did I? You're a fine woman, Beth Riley. Time was mighty lucky to have found you. I only wish it was me who'd been so lucky. Well, you had that chance, Dan. Or don't you remember? It's 
late. I better be leaving. Dan, you didn't have your pie and coffee. Another time. Thank you for everything, Beth. Dan. Dan, if you're ever troubled, if you think you'd like to talk to someone, my door is always open to you. You're a good woman, Beth. With all your own problems, you're helping me. Should be the other way around. Good night, Beth. Stairs got bogged down last night. Hoss and Pa rode out to see what they could do. I'm just making out a list of supplies for the drive. I came for my wages. Yeah. You got anything lined up? I'll make do like always. anything we can do to help. There is. Count out my wages. Okay. Pa still wants you to take that bonus. Just the wages. It's open. What do you want? Words out about what happened to you with the Cartwrights. So? Well, you're in the same boat with Temple and me now, so we thought we'd drop by and try to cheer you up. That's right. Bought our own bottle to do it with. You wasted your money. I drank my own whiskey. Get out of here. You know, you, you told me you only drank with your friends. Well, why not give us a chance? Tolliver, do you mind telling me what you've got to show for 50 years' work? Uh, beside a worn saddle and the clothes on your back and maybe what's in that saddle bag? It's enough till I sign on with another trail herd. Uh, not a chance. When the other outfits hear that the Cartwrights let you go and know the reason... You won't be able to get a job herding day-old calves. You'll wind up cleaning stables and swamping saloons. That's not a pretty future, is it? Get out of here. Sure, we'll go. But if I can show you a way to get you enough money to set you up for the rest of your life, you figure that's worth a listen? Little Joe and Hoss will bed down with the herd like they've been doing. 
Ben Cartwright will be alone at the house. That's right. Alone with all that payroll money for the trailhead wranglers. In the safe. Now, if me and Temple try to break in, they'll use a gun on us. But all you have to do is knock on the front door, and we'll be right behind you. What makes you think he'd open the door for me? Thirty years of friendship. No. No, you come to the wrong man. I want no part of it. I've done some things in my time I ain't proud of. But I ain't never stole from another man. And I ain't aiming to start now with someone I call friend. <laughs> you mean you call the Cartwrights your friends? Why, well, it was them who threw you away. Them who said you're finished, old man. Go crawl in a hole and die by yourself. That's right. They kicked you out. You buy that brand of friendship, Tolliver? We do get in the house. What makes you think Ben will open the safe for us? He's got no choice. He don't open it, we take him out. Shut up, Temple. Ben Cartwright's no fool. He's a wealthy man. He's not going to risk his life for money. He'll give it to us. There'll be no gunplay, I promise. What do you say? It's your last chance, old man. for your gun. Slow and easy. Now, Temple will ride out on ahead. You follow in the wagon right behind him and I follow you. Let's move. Yes, who's it? Dan Tolliver, Ben. Dan, you son of a gun. It's good to see you. Come on in. Well, come on in. Don't stand outside there. <laughs> we uh, don't usually keep the door bolted, but uh, with the payroll in the safe, you know, there's no point taking any chances. 
I've been waiting up for little Joe. He went to town this morning to get some supplies. Should have been back some time ago, but I guess he's uh, with a horse looking third. Like some coffee? Dan, would you like some coffee? No. Well, then I uh, hope you're coming back here. It means that you've thought things over and you're going to be working with us again. No. What is it then? If you want Joe back, you open up that safe and give me the money that's inside. What's the matter with you, Dan? We got Joe Ben, me and my partners. He ain't been hurt none, and he'll be turned loose as soon as I get back there with the money. Some kind of joke. It's no joke, Ben. We got him. What's come over you, Dan? Why? Of course, I'm fighting for what's left of my life. That's why. Because after 50 years' work, I, I find I'm used up. I got nothing, Ben. Nothing behind me and nothing up ahead except handout jobs. That's not for me, Ben. I don't aim to end up that way. You open that safe. I leave. Don't try to follow me, Ben. Can only cause trouble. I'd have given you this money. And anything else you wanted. All you had to do was ask for it. You mean another handout? If Joe's back in the morning, I won't say a word about this. You get out of here and good luck to you. But if he's hurt in any way, I'll come after you, Dan. And there won't be a place on Earth far enough or dark enough to hide you. When you reckon he's going to get back? Well, things go the way they should by sunrise. What do you mean, things go the way they should? Why shouldn't they? Well, settle down, Temple. It's going to be a long night. Oh, yeah, I figure it. The old man will be back in the morning with the money. That old man get back with the money. What do you figure you're going to do with your share? Spend it. Me too. I'm going to San Francisco, and I'm going to get me a room in one of them fancy hotels. Then I'm going to go down and buy me some of them duded up city clothes. And I'm going to kiss me every pretty girl I can find. Why don't you give him the number of your hotel room while you're at it? What difference does it make if he knows where I'm at? It ain't going to do him no good no how.
Yes, who is it? Beth, it's me, Dan. Dan, what's the matter? Can I come in? I, I want to talk to you. Of course. I'm sorry to bother you this late, but I don't have much time. Well, are you in trouble? Is there anything I can do? No, I'm fine. I, I'm leaving town. I Chances are I won't see you again. Well, what do you intend to do? Where are you going? Well, I... I ain't rightly thought about that yet. I, there's something I wanted to do before I left. I want you to have this. Where did you get all that money? Well, no matter about that. That's why I came here to, to give it to you. Here, take it. Oh, I can't accept that. Why? Well, it doesn't belong to me. Does it belong to you? Yes. It does belong to me. Maybe not the way you think, but... But there's 50 years of my life tied up in this money. I've earned it. Every dollar of it. And I want you to share it with me. But why? Because you won't have to stay up half the night working for other people. You won't have to depend on anyone for food on your table or a roof over your head. What have you done? What I've done was as much for you as for me. No, not for me. If I took this money, would it ease your conscience? Oh, Dan, don't you see you've done a wrong thing? This could lead to big trouble. I can't take this money. I earn enough to live on. I take pride in my work, the way you used to. Beth, they kicked me out. They called me an old man. They said I couldn't do my work. Well, then I'd do something that I could do. And no matter what, there'd be no shame. As long as it was honest work, I'd take pride in it. Honest work? Like Jim Flint? Cleaning spittoons. Dan. My thoughts and my prayers are with you. should have been here by now. What do you think happened to him? I'll ask him when he gets here. Check him. All right, lean forward so I can see your hands. Come on. It's him, Sand. He's here. Don't forget what we've got to do. Not a chance. Did you get it? Did Cartwright give you the money? Well, you look at it, and it's ours. It's all ours. You make sure nobody followed you here? No one followed me. It was easy, wasn't it? For you, it was easy. We owe you a lot, Tolliver. Might not have worked out if you hadn't come in with us. What you fixing to do? Cut him loose. Turn him out of here. I don't think so. Wait a minute. That was our understanding. By the time he gets home, tells him about us, we'll be long gone. No way for him to catch us. Well, maybe not this week. But what about next week or next month or next year? No. 
I'm not going to spend the rest of my life looking over my shoulder. I won't sit still for a killing. I didn't think you would. And I'm sorry. It would have changed things if you had. I'll take one of you with me. No, you won't. I didn't want you hurt. Where did it take you? Got, got me inside. I'll be all right. What are you... What are you waiting for? You got all the money now. That's what, that's what you wanted, isn't it? No. That's all you left me. What you forced on me. Oh, come on, Dan. Nobody forced you in anything. You did that all by yourself. What do, you think, what do you think? You're the, on, the only person who ever got old? Happens to lots of people. The only difference is they adjust to it. They, they find work they can handle. Good, honest work, and they take pride in it. No, not you. No, you're too proud to work for my father, but you're not too proud to steal from him. No, I feel sorry for you. You had an awful lot to offer. Fifty years of experience on a trail, something you could have passed on. But you just, you just quit. Well, you go on, take the money. Try and buy yourself a friend like my father. Here, let me help you. Let's go home, Sam. What's the matter with you, boy? Can't you see that horse standing there big as life? Well, everything's normal again. It's good to have him back. Yeah. Easy, boy. Sneak it out. Easy. I said easy, didn't I? I'm going to make a wrangler out of you, boy, in spite of yourself. <laughs> Go get him, Dad. <laughs>
beehive, huh? Sure don't appear to be as busy as one, does it? Well, it used to be quite a place. All I want's a cold beer, bath, another cold beer, those horses we bought, and one more cold beer. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to Beehive. My name's Parley. I'm the new parson here. We haven't had a chance to get acquainted. Afraid we're not parishioners. Name's Ben Cartwright from around Virginia City Way. Uh, my son's uh, Joseph and Hoss. Howdy. Howdy. Pleased to meet you, though, Reverend. No, no, not Reverend. <laughs> I prefer parson. I had the call, and I answered it. If you're in town Sunday, I'll be preaching my first sermon. Everyone's welcome, for the Lord knoweth not a stranger. Well, thank you very much, Parson. If we're still in town, we'd be happy to attend. Uh, could you direct hey, me? Hey, fellas, come on here. Let's go here. Hey, buddy, man. You get any new wives lately? How about one of me, Grandpa? You get them from your friends. Well, this is disgraceful. I've never seen anything like this. Fred, enough. That's enough. Come on, get back to the ranch, all of you. All of you. Sorry this happened. Our boys had a little too much to drink. But all right, Mr. Carborough, I'm used to it. My people have had years of it. Mr. Carbo. This is Ben Cartwright and his sons from over near Virginia City. Pleasure, Cartwright. I've heard of you and of your ranch. If there's anything I can do for you... Well, Mr. Carbo, as a matter of fact, there is. We're here on a horse buying trip. Uh, could you direct us to Hebert Clausen? Yeah. I can direct you to him. Let's follow that buck for him. That's him. Pleasure to see you, Mr. Good. Right. I knew from our correspondence we felt the same way about good horses. Well, that's not Hoss is really responsible for that. He's the one who first heard of your stables. Oh, my wife, Susanna. My wife, Elizabeth Ann. Girls, this is Mr. Cudright. Hoss, little Joe. Fat lambs. We've been anxiously awaiting your arrival, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, ma'am. Don't get much company out here. It's nice to see some new faces. Thank you. New faces? Why, there was a traveling drummer by here not more than six months ago. And Heber's still complaining about Susanna and me buying a few little things. <laughs> a few little... Why, he left with an empty wagon and took a trip to Europe? <laughs> Our husband is given to slight exaggeration. <laughs> All right, I'll help you with the horses, show you where to freshen up, and after that, we'll have some supper. Hey, that, that sounds mighty good, but it wouldn't be too much trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Susanna does all the work, I just watch. She's taking advantage while she can. <laughs> <laughs> a very fortunate man, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I trust the fact that we're of the Mormon faith doesn't disturb you. Of course not, Mr. Cartwright. Joseph. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Paul. I'm sure got some mighty fine looking horses. Oh, he sure does, isn't he? Hey, Pa. Hmm? You know they were you know they were Mormons when you were first writing to them? No, the subject never came up. No reason for it, too. Every man's religion is his own business, isn't it? Oh, yeah, sure, but you know, you hear a lot about this polygamy and and when you see it for the first time. Yeah. You know, Joe, I was thinking about that myself. You first meet Mr. Clausen, and he looks just like an ordinary fella, don't he? Well, isn't he? Oh, you know what I mean. Well, yes, I know what you mean. He has a religion which is different from ours. A religion which approves of plural marriages. But before you start thinking that's awful strange, just remember that all ancient religions practice polygamy. Yeah, but, Paul, that was Old Testament days. Well, they're an Old Testament people. In fact, they have the same problem. What do you mean by that, Pa? Persecution. 
These people have been driven out of their homes time and again, been stoned, murdered, driven out into the open plain where 600 of them died in one winter. So many of their men have been killed that they practice plural marriage just to prevent extinction. Well, it's sure hard working people. You can tell by this place. Yeah, this country owes a great deal to the Mormon church. Many a wagon train would never reach the Nevada Territory if it hadn't been for the Mormon stations along the way. Well, anyhow, these Clausens seem like mighty fine folks. Yeah, they're fine folks, all right. Elizabeth Ann, are you sure you want to drive the buggy all the way out to where those men are working? <laughs> will you please quit worrying? I tell you, the fresh air will be good for me. You can't help worry a little bit about people you love. Susanna? Did you ever hate me? I mean, at first. I think I tried. A little. But who could hate you? You know, I was afraid when I first came here. But you always made me feel as if I was wanted. You are wanted. Very much. Susanna. I don't know why the Lord meant it to be me to have a child instead of you. I just know he did. I know it too. Without you, there'd be nothing. Now, come on. seen a pretty much horse place? Don't give me too much of an opening, horse. Mormons have quite a reputation for being through dealers. I found that out at Mormon Crossing on the Carson and at Genoa when they had the Mormon stations there. Uh, we really weren't so bad. We just had a way of setting up our stations where they were needed most. Well, I guess you could call it good business. Fortunately, a lot of people didn't. Oh, here comes that lunch the girls promised us. Don't let any of this go to waste. There ain't much likelihood of that, mm. man. Oh, that looks good. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Haven, those are two remarkable women. Why, thank you, Ben. And you couldn't be more right. <laughs> I hate to interrupt a good lunch like this with business talk, but how long do you think it'll take to round up the rest of the herd? Five, six days. As long as that? Well, I think we'll do it sooner. We're in a bit of a bind of time, you know. We gotta go up north and get that bunch up there. I'll tell you what, I'll ask Grant Carbo if he won't lend me a couple of hands to help out. That might be a good idea. Carbo uh, seems to be a pretty big man around these parts. I'd say so. With the exception of myself, everyone in Beehive works for him one way or the other. Yes, sir. Well, Dave, you ever figure you'd wind up working for a Mormon? Well, maybe we're gonna get a bonus, like an extra wife or something. What do you say, Cartwright? I say we got a lot more work to do. Well, we'll see you in about four days. That's right. Remember, that's a dry stretch after you leave the Humboldt. Yeah. How come it's always me that's gotta go and never Joe? He always gets stayed, that, burn it. Because we've already looked over the horses we've got here. Joe can look after them. This new bunch we're looking at, I need you. You know, it really is wonderful to have somebody in the family that knows so much about horses. <laughs> well, young man, you just make sure you meet us on time. Yes, sir. Mr. Clausen, I don't want to start a family squabble or anything like that, but uh, I don't know whether your wife spoiled you or you spoiled your wife, but they sure didn't take much time in spoiling my two boys. I wouldn't want them to know it, but I've got to admit they're pretty good at that sort of thing. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Cartwright. Bye, hey. horse. I'll save you a piece of pie, brother. Yeah, you do that. You know, talking about that apple pie kind of worked up my appetite. You got any left? 
I think we can find some. Disappoint Susanna and Elizabeth Ann, but I'm a little reluctant to go to church. I thought you just told me you always attend. When Reverend Morse was alive, yes. Wonderful man, Joe. Never did agree with my religion, and we used to argue about it. But he'd defend with his life my right to practice it. The doors of his church were always open. Well, this new preacher seems friendly enough. Some of these self-ordained men have some pretty fixed ideas. I'd plan to wait until I got an invitation before attending his church. Settles that. We lose again. <laughs> Just don't ever let them start picking on you, Joseph. They'll never let them. I'd like you to meet our new preacher, Mr. Parley. Eva Clawson? His wife, Elizabeth Ann. His wife, Susanna. You've met Joe Cartwright. Preacher. Mr. Clausen, I know that you're not of our faith. But I want to make you welcome to the house of the Lord. We thank you for that, preacher. You will find me a very understanding man. I used to be a missionary among the heathen Indians. I know salvation can be yours. Oh, I understand the importance of salvation. Each member of my faith must serve a mission, too. Mr. Carbo, you know how fond I was of Reverend Morris. And you know how hard I've worked for this parish. But I never agreed with Reverend Morris about admitting these, these people into the church. You'll find Mrs. Lang a great help preacher. Come along, my dear. Well, there is so much to do, my friends. And that is a key word, friend. For we must all live together as children of the Lord. But I say to you, to ignore sin is to condone it. And as soldiers of the Lord, we must march against it. Ours not to condemn, ours to cure, to drive out evil. And evil is here. There is one among us who worships a false god, we must help him to see the error of his ways. We must help him back onto the path of righteousness and away from the influence of those destroyers of man and faith who dwell in the valley of the great salt lake. Let us not ignore them. Let us extend our hearts our helping hands to the innocent who have been led into a life of sin. And that is what I mean by the word friend. We extend our hand to those who have lost the way. We must save them. When we save each other, we save ourselves. Amen. 
Susanna. I'm sorry about that. You got a little carried away. It's all right. I won't let anything hurt you, Susanna. You know that. Everyone knows how much I thought of Reverend Morris. And I must admit, this town has needed the truth for a long time. Oh, you were splendid, Mr. Parley. So much more honest and more forceful than Reverend Morris ever was. So he's got the right to disagree with your religion. You give him the right to stand up in church and make personal accusations. I won't deny it hurts, Joseph. There have always been some who disliked us for our faith. We've always known that. Fortunately, there are some who know and respect the Mormon religion for what it is. Tell you boys, the Mormon church, by its very nature, is designed to destroy. I've been around him a long time, preacher. Now, you can't deny the Mormons done an awful lot towards building up this country. Well, when I first came here, they were already irrigating their farms. Looked like a garden. Doesn't that prove my point? Where are those people now? In 1857, Brigham Young issued an order for those people to abandon this community and go back to Salt Lake City. They obeyed like sheep. There's your danger, Mr. Carbo. Hundreds of people selling out their land and their houses. Fantastic strength of one bigoted man who lives with a harem of women. Well, you got me there, preacher. They did up and sell all right. All except Heber Clausen, that is. Yeah. Now, that's interesting. How is it that he stayed on? He couldn't defy the church order. Well, <clears throat> they tell me you uh, cross old Brigham's palm with silver, you can get away with anything. Yeah. Or uh, give him one of your young wives. That's what keeps Brigham young. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you. Still, Eber Clausen's been a good neighbor to me. Of course, I've done a lot of favors for him. Just loaned a couple of hired hands, as a matter of fact, a few days ago. Yes, but aren't we getting away from the point, Mr. Carbo? Now, as the leader of this community, you don't condone plural marriage. No, I don't condone it. It's just that I sort of kind of like to point out where the blame belongs. Now, take Susanna. I've known her a long time. Both those girls are just innocent victims. Why, if you could get them out from under Heber Clausen's influence. Perhaps we'll do exactly that, Mr. Carbo. Perhaps we will. Well, it's been wonderful having this informal discussion. And as I know, I can't change your habits overnight. <laughs> if I must come into this saloon to meet with my discussion group, I'm perfectly prepared to do so. <laughs> Enjoy it, sir, very much. Yes, thank you. Mighty right, fine, sir. Thank you very much. Preacher, you really got the word. You're going to be all well, right. Thank you. I'll take you to the door. Thank you. Cut those hammerheads out. We'll let these cool down a couple of days until we bring the big herd out of the hills. Then Joe can make his first cut here. Well, in that case... In that case, uh, there isn't much reason for you two not to go on in town, is there? Last few days up here have been pretty dry, huh? Join us for a drink, Joe? No, thanks. I think I'll just stick around here. It's a funny thing, Joe. Every time I've just about made up my mind, I don't like that Grant Carbo. He comes up with another favor, like loaning me those hands. He 
either here? No, he and Mr. Cartwright are up at Sawgrass. No matter. You're the one I want to see anyway. I've got no business with you, Mr. Carbo. The door's behind you. If you don't leave here at once, I'll call Elizabeth Ann. I just seen her drive off. You have to call pretty loud, wouldn't you? Now, why don't you be sensible and listen to me? It'll be for your own good. There's a lot of talk going on about town about you Mormons. I think that preacher's out to get you. They even talk about running you out. They wouldn't dare. You're wrong. They'd dare. I think they'll try it. Then we'll fight them. One man, pregnant lady, yourself. Why don't you be sensible, Susanna? Talk to Eva. Convince him to sell him out to me like the others did. Let him and Elizabeth Ann leave here. He ain't no kind of husband to you anyway, taking another wife like that. I've made no secret about the way I felt about you. I get what I want, Susanna. One way or another. Don't touch me! Let me go! Let me go! You can't fight me, Susanna. You want to make up your mind to that. so foolish with your eyes bugging out and your nostrils flaring. <laughs> I've known you a long time, Mr. Carbo, and I never thought I'd live to see the day you'd make such a fool of yourself. <laughs> I can't wait to tell Elizabeth Ann. <laughs> Riding away from here, I thought I'd better come back. Susanna, what's wrong? It was nothing. It, it was just someone for Heber. It was Grant Carble, wasn't it? Susanna, how much longer are you going to try to fight this by yourself? Elizabeth, what am I going to do? I've, I've told you a thousand times, tell Heber. And it would cause too much trouble. Wouldn't that be better than having Grant Carbo putting his hands on you, following you around with his eyes, trying to make love to you? Heber is my husband. You know what happens to anybody that tries to fight Carbo. Heber is my husband, too. And there's more than one kind of hurt. Suppose Grant Carbo starts lying about his relationship with you. People will believe him. Do you know that? Susanna, Heber loves you, and so do I. And I'm not going to see two people I love being hurt by lies. If you don't tell Heber how Grant Carbo's been bothering you, I will. I say, got a little worried when you didn't show up for lunch, Elizabeth Ann. So I thought I'd better ride in. What's happened here? It's nothing. It's just foolish woman business. Not some more of that business in town. No, really. Tell me. Oh, Keeper.
Susanna, what's wrong? I haven't got time to explain. It's Heber. There's going to be bad trouble. He's gone to town looking for Carbo. You can't ride in here like a madman, starting fights like this. We demand an explanation. We want to know what this is about. You... You ask him. He knows. has done everything he could to be nice to them people. <laughs> please, please, all of you. Now we're all agreed it was an unprovoked attack. But let he who is without sin among ye cast the first stone. You all know how much I thought of Reverend Morris, God rest his soul. But I told him from the first he was wrong to encourage those Mormons. My wife always did say that. We must not turn aside. That's all right for you to say, preacher. How about that Cartwright? What do we know about him? Why, Mr. Carbo himself told me the Cartwrights are the biggest ranchers in Nevada. Sure. But how do we know this one is Joe Cartwright? You ever see the way he packs a gun? How do we know he ain't one of them day nights? One of them hired killers the Mormon church has? I've said this before, and I say it again. We could all be murdered in our beds. Please, Mrs. Lang. That's the way prejudice is born. We must not jump to conclusions like that. Conclusions? Just remember, there's nowhere those Mormons didn't have to be driven out of. And they shouldn't have been allowed to stop in this country either. Please, you must not poison your minds like that. You must pray for guidance. We have got to try to drive the devil out of the souls of these non-believers. I pray that I may have divine guidance when I go to talk to them. Oh, I'll pray with you, preacher, but I mean to get me a gun and carry it, too. You ain't going to be alone, friend. Please, all of you, let us pray. Uh, sure you don't want me to go in town for the supplies? You can't just hide under a rock, Joe. Susanna, Elizabeth, Ann, and I are still Mormons, and life goes on. Oh, 
Well, I'll be out at the pasture. See you when you get back. I guess that'll do it for today, Miss Lang. Put it on my bill. No more credit, Clawson. I've had an account with you for years now, Lang. Well, money's tight. Things change. No credit for anybody. Look, it'd pinch me pretty hard to pay cash right now. Well, I've got troubles of my own, Clawson. You want those supplies or not? Put these pants and shirts on my bill. Oh, Will you, Lang? Sure, Megan. Glad to. You want those supplies? Yes, I want the supplies. Okay, Mrs. Green. started again, hasn't it? Yes. But you and I have been through this before. It's not us I'm worried about, Hebert. It's Elizabeth Ann. She's never faced prejudice before. I prayed for guidance. When I opened my Bible, the marker fell on Luke 8-2. The answer sprang from the page. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Repent. Repent and be saved. Fall on your knees and pray with me. Magdalene's. Pray with me, Mary Magdalene's, that I may free you from your sins. Renounce the man who has led you into this mockery of holy matrimony. Free yourselves from this concubinage. Open! Get out of my house before I break your neck with my bare hands. Settled up that day you like. Thanks. Where's Susanna go? We can't move the horses alone. Tex and Dave quit last night. They went back with Carbo. help like that. Doggone if I wouldn't have stayed on. What do you reckon it happened if uh, this here team accidentally run away and uh, went right down into that band of horses? I reckon I just have to ride right along beside you and save you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
Let's give that Mormon something to think about. do that for i just got this team of runaways quieted down i told you to get down off that wagon well boys i guess i'm gonna have to accommodate him like you are. Load him in the wagon, take him back to town. Nothing to do with you. I'm the one that shot him. It was self-defense. It doesn't make any difference. Now, what do you mean it doesn't make any difference? I'll go to the sheriff and explain what happened. I've got witnesses. There is no sheriff here. Carbo's the law. There still must be something we can do. Oh, yes. Like I told you, we can do what our people have always had to do. Move on. No. Perhaps we're being repaid for defying the church when Brigham Young ordered us to sell out here. Don't say that, Heber. You and Susanna were just married in love. This was your home. You've served your missions, Heber. Well, we'll have to decide what we'll take with us. Now, oh, wait a minute. You, you can't just leave, give all this up, everything you've worked for? It's a free country. They can't make you leave here. You're wrong, Joseph. I know it all so well. The small grains of truth stirred up into a killing sandstorm. All the tired, distorted tales of Porter Rockwell, Brigham Young's personal assassin. The Fancher train. The day nights hired killers of the church. None of the real truth about our exodus from Missouri, assassination of our leader, the driving of our people from the beautiful Nauvoo. Six hundred of us who died in winter's quarters. A long trek to Deseret. Don't, Heber, don't torture yourself. I've heard it so many times. So many times. He didn't stand a chance, boss. Cartwright, as he calls himself. He's a hired killer for the Mormons. I mean, there ain't no doubt about it. Possum's one of them day nights, too. He came at us with a rifle. You don't know how many more of them avenging angels is waiting right outside the town, ready to move in here. My wife always did say we'd be murdered in our beds if we let them Mormons stay. Hey, preacher, you still gonna pray for them? How? How can I pray? I offered them salvation. They repay us with violence. This crime cannot go unpunished. You've done all you can, preacher. A couple of killers loose. We 
May God have mercy on their souls. much of ourselves into it. You have no choice at the moment but to accept Joseph's hospitality. Virginia City's a large place. There'll be a doctor there for Elizabeth Ann. Don't worry about her, Heber. I'll be with her every inch of the way. You love her very much, don't you? Yes. And I love the child she's to give us just as devoutly. They're coming. There's about a dozen of them. I didn't believe you, Eber. I didn't believe a thing like this could happen. Get Elizabeth Ann. I want you two to go on. I don't want to leave you. You do as I say. You go with the women. I'll hold them off as long as I can, then I'll join you. We both stay. Keep moving. We'll catch up as soon as we can. Yes, Heber. Saddle up a horse. Right. Remember now. Let the preacher do the talking. You want those women to be harmed. Now, we are not on a mission of vengeance. All right. Go on. Clausen? Do you hear me, Clausen? Oh, I hear you, preacher. We mean no harm to the women. Now, you send them on out. You're too late, preacher. They've already gone. All right. Smoke them out. Heber! Men. You mean you're gonna let them go? There are only two of them. Nothing ahead of them but the desert. If they join up with the women, that's gonna even slow them down more. We got plenty of time. Fires of hell and damnation. They should have listened to me! They should have listened. 
Those women cannot escape. We must find the man who has tainted them. We must find him, and he must die that they may be saved. We won't let you down, preacher. You can bet on it. Mount up! The wages of sin is death.